Not only do you need to know the electronegativity values of all the atoms you see on screen, but there are plenty more you must know, and I'm here to make it easier for you to memorize, predict, and infer the rest. Firstly, we have the elements that show up frequently in the molecules that we study, and they fit the acronym SCHNAPS. Carbon has a 2.5 electronegativity, hydrogen 2.1, nitrogen 3.0, oxygen 3.5, phosphorus 2.1, sulfur 2.5. So if we rank the schnapps atoms by electronegativity, oxygen is the highest, and then we have a tie for hydrogen and phosphorus for the lowest at 2.1. It's also worthy to note and memorize that francium has the lowest electronegativity at 0.7, fluorine the highest at 4.0. That also tells you that any other value is gonna fall within this range. Likewise, these two bookends make up the bottom left and top right corners. And we're just gonna ignore the noble gases because they don't even have an electronegativity. You might have also noticed that there's a general increase in electronegativity values as we go up and to the right. Next up, we're gonna look at the halogens, this group over here. Fluorine is 4.0, chlorine is 3.5, bromine is 2.8, iodine is 2.5, and astatine is 2.2. You might have also noticed that as we go up on the periodic table, and this is a general trend, we increase in the electronegativity value. So this is higher than this, which is higher than this, etc., etc. Next up, we're going to look at groups 1 and 2, the metals excluding hydrogen. So you only need to memorize of these 12, these three, beryllium, magnesium, and francium. Other than beryllium, all of these atoms' electronegativity values fall within the range of 0.7 to 1.2. Next up, the transition metals. There's actually four rows of transition metals, but the lowest row doesn't even have electronegativity values. Everything else fits within the range of 1.3 to 2.2. A huge inference to make is that if you're comparing the electronegativity of a transition metal to an element that fits within groups one or two, it's going to be greater for the transition metal. And this is, of course, with the exception of hydrogen and beryllium because it falls outside of that range and into the transition metal range. 